All right, is the internet on the brink of a breakdown? I know for many people this will come as a complete shock. Well, for a start, Polina will lose her job. Scientists and engineers in the UK are warning that the web could reach its limit in just eight years as it struggles to keep up with our increasing demand, not just not just how much we're using it, but what we're using it for. An urgent meeting is being held in London later this month to discuss how to avert a crisis. With me now is technology commentator Paul Spain. Paul, good morning. Good morning. Are we on the brink of a crisis? Well, it depends what you call a brink. Uh, yeah, it depends they're talk- what you call a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, they're talking about an issue that's eight years away. And I guess at any point, if we stop development and in internet-related technologies and just left, left everything how it was, yeah, probably within about eight to ten years, we would be uh, we would be right royally stuffed. Yeah. I um, I mean, you look at, well, companies like our company here, um, you know, we're constantly pushing people to do things on demand. We're, we're constantly streaming stuff. We're up the wazoo on the internet. And is this the issue. It's not that people are using it so much, it's what people are doing on it. Yeah, it very much comes down to what we're doing and we're pushing yeah, bigger and bigger amounts of information through. Yeah, there's a growing amount of people that are using it, but it's more the types of uses. And as we move to sort of 4K, 8K video, these ho- much higher definition uh, feeds, then that's going to have an impact. And in the UK, of course, you, you know, you've got a, a country similar size to ours, but you know, more than 10 times the population. So you need a huge amount of capacity coming in. Mm. And that's where they're concerned that the fibre optic cables won't actually be able to cope with yeah. that. Um, it's a couple of, well, no, not a couple, a couple of decades ago, I went to the Easter show at the Epsom Showgrounds. Um, literally, it would have been 20 years ago. And they had, a, they had a piece of copper wire there, and next to it, they had a tube of fibre. And there was some incredible statistic as to how much information could go down this fibre. And I remember at the time as a sort of young kid, I remember thinking, you know, God, I mean, that's a phenomenal amount of information. You could never fill that. So what's happening now is these fibre cables that have been laid, they're now reaching capacity. Why don't we just lay another fibre cable? Well, that, that's always a possibility. And, you know, for New Zealand, where we don't have a lot of diversity, we've only really got the, the two uh, fibre cables coming in uh, from the Southern Cross network. Um, there is some risk there to our country around what happens in an earthquake-type situation or a terrorist situation. If those were pulled up, it could take weeks to get New Zealand reconnected to the internet. So for, for us, that's where the real risk is. So there are real concerns here because we are reaching capacity, because we are vulnerable, particularly in a country like New Zealand. To give people an idea of how use on the internet is increasing, in Britain, and this is a separate issue, they say as a result of the internet increasing, doubling in usage every four years, it will consume the entire electricity production by the year 2035, just the internet. So forget lights and all the other things, the entire production would be consumed by using the internet. Yeah, I think that's looking at not only the internet, but all the servers and you know, technology uh, and varying other you know, pieces of technology. Yeah, and that's if it keeps going at the rate that it's going. And I'm not sure that that's you know really a realistic measure. And also, it's possible to put those systems in different locations where uh, yeah, power is maybe cheaper. Okay, or it's so more it's not a crisis, but we're systems. we're going to have to make some decisions. At the end of the day, could it come down to either hugely increasing prices or just literally capping the amount of use people have? Well, we've had capping anyway. I think, um, yeah, there's always a possibility of that, and it's always a bit of a balance. Uh, Yeah, costs may go up, but I don't think we're up for dramatic costs, certainly not in the foreseeable future. All right, okay, that's good. So so it's it's something we've got to do, but we don't need to worry about it too much. Let me have a look at your watch. Is that an iWatch? Is it any good? Um, it's it's interesting. I'm still... You have to have one, because you're a technology commentator. Still getting my head around it, um, but... Yeah, I think Apple have done a pretty good job with this as their, yeah. their first watch. Don't knock it against anything, will you? Because apparently they just shatter into a thousand pieces. But you can always buy another one. <laughs> Isn't that the nature <laughs> of technology? Thanks a lot, Paul. Um, Paul Spain there, the 7 o'clock news.